Welcome to Nintendo Voice Chat. I'm Jose Otero, and this is IGN's Nintendo Show. And coming up on Nintendo Voice Chat, we've got more impre hands-on impressions of Nintendo Switch and some of their games. We have a, some new information brought to you by Time Magazine and a trio of articles that they just put out this week. Also, a segment called Why So Secretive, Nintendo? And talking about a couple things that have been left out. And then finally, we have the question block. Here to talk with me this week about this, we got Alana Pierce. Hi. And we have uh, from our IGN UK British podcast, Invasion, Get Your Screaming Girls, we got Daniel Krupa. Oh. And we have Gav Murphy. All right. Uh, introduce yourselves to folks who ha maybe have not or haven't watched the UK show. Like, who are you guys? What do you do? Um, do you want to go first? <laughs> if you want. Yeah. Uh, I should we'll, probably remember what I do. Uh, we, so we do a podcast called the IGN UK podcast. Um, but like, which is full of all of us. It's like seven of us in the UK. Often. Yeah, we have a cycling cast. Um, but we also do a Dark Souls series called Prepare to Try, which some people might watch. An excellent Dark Souls series yeah. called Prepare to Try. I love that show. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's really good fun. But that's it. You'll find us mucking around in London getting drunk most of the time. So yeah. All right. Nice. I like it. I like it. And what do you do uh, specifically? Like, uh, the, like which role? Like, do you mostly focus video? What's this about? Why? Who, who's asking you these questions? This is Gav. We let you go. <laughs> this is an intervention. <laughs> you have to justify your job. Are you being vetted, or you're not allowed in the U.S.? Yeah. No. Tell us everything. Uh, no. Is no. this what America's like now? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> who do you work for? Uh, what yes, do you do? I, I make a lot of the video stuff okay. uh, in Excellent. the U.K. Um, but yeah, we just muck around. Really, it's good. I oversee said mucking around. I am the UK managing editor, and I kind of just look after the team and make sure we don't make too many mistakes while you're asleep. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yep, yeah, we do. We do. All right. So uh, everyone at this table has played uh, Nintendo Switch quite recently uh, with uh, Gav and with Daniel. That was back uh, during the first hands-on event. The, yeah. yeah, the London premiere. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, for Alana, this was more recently at the <laughs> Rooster Teeth Australia Expo. Is yeah. that what it's called? Mm -hmm. yep. Just be just sure. Uh, so let's talk about it, right? So your hands-on impressions, the games that you liked, even the games that you didn't. Like, let's go. Let's yeah. start with hardware. What did you think? I like it. Like, I thought it was going to be quite flimsy, but um, I really, in like, it's sort of, it's just one of those things that just feels really, really nice. Like, when you had the Wiimote mm. and the nunchuck, you're like, the first time you had it, you can like, hear them creaking. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but it's just like, they're just, no, they're just, it feels really good. And, like, I thought it'd be too small. So I got, like, giant fat hands. Um, so I thought, I was kind of worried that I wouldn't be able to do it properly, but I was all right with it. So it was good. I found the, uh, I played it docked and undocked, and I yeah. really liked the weight distribution in the handheld mode. Mm. Like, I feel like it just, it feels solid. doesn't feel flimsy. It's like, yeah. it's it's comfortable. I had a slight issue with the, the left side for me. It felt like I had to keep readjusting my thumb when I was moving right. forward. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's probably something you just get used to. Yeah. Really like the Joy-Con. Didn't get to try the Pro Controller. Has anyone tried that yet? Mm. Yeah, no, I got You have? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that? I did. Um, no, it felt great. Like, really uh, sort of a comfortable, just, just nice <laughs> and meaty. Yeah, well, uh, depends on who you ask. Like, some folks uh, me, feel like they me. like that. <laughs> yeah, you definitely on the <laughs> ugly side. Uh, but uh, Pear, I was talking to Pear about it, and he really likes sort of the smoky look of it, how you okay. can kind of see the internals a little bit. Um, but it is really sort of big in your hands. Not quite as big as the Duke. Yeah. Uh, which you guys do know, right? The, yep. the yeah, original yeah, yeah. Uh, Xbox controller and just how massive that thing was. But I really um, like the Wii U Pro controller. I think that, that was like one of my favorite yeah, controllers. Yeah, like, it was really good. Really nice. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, this this one, uh, I, I think I prefer this one just because having the two analogs up here, yeah. but like with every system, I had to like do a, a readjustment. Um, and this one's a little bit more like a, a 360 uh, gamepad, which I okay. played a ton of mm -hmm. uh, for a while. So yeah. that's just kind of a, a setting I think I was comfortable with. What's the yeah. biggest difference between the Switch Pro and the Wii U Pro? Mm. It's like, so, like we isn't Switch Pro like this? It's like more like circular, isn't it? So yeah. it's more like the Wii um, Pro controller. Yeah, like yeah. The little white one, which right. is also rubbish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say that. Uh, and just, uh, I don't know. I, I honestly, outside of button placement, I think that's about it. Um, but the big difference between the Switch itself and the Pro controller is just button size is way bigger. Yeah. yeah. On the Pro controller, like yeah. they're really big buttons the way you know you're used to with most consoles. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. when you're playing undocked, you notice how small they are because it roughly feels like a 3ds, right? Yeah. In yeah. terms of the yeah. face buttons. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would just say that. What do you think, Krupa? I think it's excellent. I, I think it looks and feels like a modern device. You know, you can imagine having that in your bag alongside your like MacBook and yeah. an iPad, yeah. and it doesn't stand out. Like, I think they probably looked at the Wii U and go, "When, all right, let's yeah, let's maybe try a little bit harder than this." Because mm -hmm. like, I love the Wii U and I love the games on it, but when you hold that gamepad, it feels creaky yeah. and it doesn't feel Pretty nice. Big. It doesn't feel like a quality product in a sense. It like, feels like what a you're doing with it is fun. iPad basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I thought it was really slick. I thought even the like Joy Cons, like when you take them off, that they're going to feel like really light and flimsy, but they're like they almost feel like metallic. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really like them a lot. Yeah. yeah. Did you? Were you? Was that the first thing you did when you touched? Like, oh wait, I gotta, yeah. I gotta press that button well, in the back. That was the, the only thing that slightly 
frustrating about the event. Like everything was kind of locked down, yeah. and I wanted to just like basically play with all the bits. I, yeah. I still haven't removed it from the dock. I haven't so turned the controllers on and off. They wouldn't it's let us so do good. that. Yeah. I just yeah. want to play with it. Yeah. 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 Really Plus, nice people in London, <laughs> what? people in London can't be trusted. They thought we'd run away with it if we. You would have taken one. I would have taken one. Yeah, I did actually generally think about taking one, um, because. <laughs> I just thought, what would happen? <laughs> what would happen? But then I'd I take th- a Joy-Con. But then I also thought it was like the first day and I thought, well, if I steal this, one, I can't do anything with it. <laughs> like, I'll get back to the office and be like, okay, I've got this. But also, yeah. I'm ruining the fun for other people then, aren't I? I don't want to do that. Also, but someone I, probably I lost a job. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's like fine. That. Well, we had, a thing at, we had a thing at our London event. Um, so basically, they took over the Hammersmith Apollo, which is like a like really famous sort of gig venue mm-hmm. uh, in London. They took over the entire thing and they filled it with all these different uh, like uh, booths for um, for Switch. But they, like the people who were doing the on the booths were just saying any old stuff. Yeah. Like we were yeah, asking, they had them, no idea. Like we were asking them questions because obviously, like it was a press day, so mm-hmm. we were just asking like different questions, and mm-hmm. they were just they, instead of just going, "Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know that," they were just answering. They were just wow. answering. They were just saying resolutions. Like, <laughs> so there, there was there was loads of different. We came away because obviously we were trying to cover it for news as well, and we were yeah. coming back. And we covered it in two teams. So like Joe and I went down in the afternoon. Then we came back. And we were like, "Oh, so the guy who's working on Switch told us this," and we were like. That uh, sounds made up. So I'm They're just making sure stuff up. Well, <laughs> the people that they have for events for Nintendo, it's definitely this way in Australia. I don't know about other regions. Right. Usually aren't Nintendo employees. Yeah, yeah they're usually like hired from like model agencies, yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah, so that people and don't they have know like anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But the, I spoke to someone. They said they they were being trained up two days beforehand. Yeah. I was surprised none of that like kind of leaks. There was like a good fifty people demoing. Well, stuff. absolutely. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. Did, it did leak though. There was that 4chan post that was basically every oh, title. Yeah. Remember oh, okay. before well, the presentation, like a whole. Yeah, list yeah. of what was in the pre- and it was right was yeah. out in the world and it was just like oh like once again europe like get it together yeah, yeah. offense guys <laughs> oh, take so, well, yeah. t- t- a little bit of well, offense. Thing, like joe, joe and i played arms and uh like we loved it but like we asked the guy we were like oh hey man would you are you able to play this like without like motion control the guy was like yep that's yeah, true, definitely. Though. Is it really yeah, true? That's okay, true. Cool. That that's is that's actually good. true. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Uh, so that's the thing. We were a, like, how does that work? I've heard there is a portable mode uh, for that game where you're basically okay. able to play when it's undocked. Like if you're on the go, you can get some time in. Yeah. Okay. It does work that way, um, which is interesting because it's you also- you hear this from a booth? Dude. No, I got this from the source. Excuse like, I got this, yeah, from, from some treehouse folks. I'm sure of it. I'm not making this up. I just had a coffee. Um, some let's fake see. news from yeah. Jose. Oh, God. That, that terms of You're not, control. Yeah, really. Um, yeah, I played Zelda at the event that I yes. was at, and I really wanted to play that on uh, Switch, and there were huge frame rate issues, which is really unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, some yeah, people right. didn't have those. I know yeah. Digital Foundry did a report, and they didn't have any problems, yeah. but okay. it was pretty brutal for me, specifically in handheld mode. Docked was actually okay. okay. And I mentioned that to the Nintendo rep who was next to me. He was like, yeah, it's been bad all day and i was like you clearly don't work for nintendo <laughs> you absolutely don't yeah like, yeah we really dropped the ball on this one <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and when you go into like frame rate issues right we're talking slideshow here or we're just talking drop frames like noticeable drop frames but then we're fine like where where does it fall because when folks say like massive frame rate issues i feel like there's a contingent of folks who are like coming closer to the edge of a cliff ready to like jump right because so they're like terrified it was that. uh frame rate drops that was specifically, I think, happening whenever I would be on a hill going downward. So I feel like it was like trying to render the environment when I was moving downward is what the problem was. Uh, Obviously, this is still a demo. It could just be a Wii U port in theory and not the final version, but it it was basically every time I would walk down a staircase or down a hill. It, It was very jarring. Yeah, no, and it's kind of the thing with open world games. I mean, like, there's always something, right, where you're like, oh, like, when you're rendering that much stuff or what have you. But, yeah, I, I'm excited to find out for the final version, like, wh- okay. where did they end up? Because um, they've already said, yeah, frame rate's the same on both, but they're not saying locked on either yeah. side, right? Like, not locked on mm-hmm. Wii U and not definitely not locked on Switch. Yeah. Um, what about some of the other games you guys played? Did you play 1-2-Switch? You had a hilarious video, Daniel. Yeah, it was good. Of, uh, you, uh, you and Alex. Yeah. Uh, so we played, because like, we don't still know how many games are in it, but I think there's, like, so an official Nintendo. This is an official Nintendo employee. Told Two me that there's, there's like <laughs> the the six games represented a small selection. Yeah. I think Joe did a feature where he fat went through the trailer yes. and he found like seventeen more games oh, wow. in there. Yeah. So there might be like a few dozen in there. Mm. And yeah, we played six games and we did a video where we were like playing each one. I kind of lost every single one. Yeah, <laughs> really bad at them all. <laughs> yeah. uh, but they're a lot of fun. What were they? It's the the cow milking. Uh-huh. I'm not very good at milking a cow. Uh-huh. I'm not good at being a sheriff. The, the not good at breaking one? into safe. No, we not that one. I probably wouldn't even that one. <laughs> um, not couldn't good break at safe? couldn't break into the safe. safe. Was I'm not good at guessing how many balls are in a box. That I was I can't good at see that. Into. I was good at that. Got no life skills. How does oh. the safe one work? Um, um, yeah, so it's basically like you, you're turning oh. you're turning it, and it's like 
uh, as you turn your hand, you're basically going like round like a sort of dial. Mm -hmm. You have to like find feel like there's yeah, like a, feel a vibration like a bridge, that's cool. and, that's for, and you have to hold it on the vibration. It's actually easier if you yeah. kind of don't look at the screen of the other person. Yeah, yeah. Go and yeah. like looking the other way, and people will come past going, "What is going on?" Mm. There? So that's a multiplayer game as well. Yeah, yeah you play that. Right? Yeah. Dancing one, which I didn't think was very. There was a, a trailer, trailer this morning that showed a no, one it's a one two switch game where you've got yeah. like match poses. Yeah, so on, on the beat you've got to like hold it in a certain way. And then the other person's then got to match you, but yeah. it's very imprecise because it's just that. Yeah, it's yeah. Just the orientation. That was another thing we were asking the booth guy. We were like, well, he was like, oh, do something crazy with your legs. I was like, I'm not going to do anything with my legs because it can't tell what I'm doing with my legs. Yeah. But Gav, it's more fun. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> like I'll gavel decide what's fun. But that's the thing, like, Joe, he was he was telling us, like, me, me and Joe how to do it, because obviously they've been briefed for, like, mm -hmm. not just press, but for other people as well. Yeah. You must have thought me and Joe were so grumpy because we were just like, hang on, though. No, it doesn't. It can't pick up our legs, and the guy's like, "No, no, no, it can. You have to do something cool with your legs like this." And we were like, "No, oh, that actually can't work like that." Um, so debunking him live yeah, to his yeah. face. What if they either get like Joy-Con shoes? Yeah, make maybe. Well boots? Or, or yeah. just like a, a strap of some kind, like a, a holster. Like on your leg. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean there, there's a there's a quick draw game, and there you can just shoot at someone. Well, that would um, be cool. I don't need to buy any there's, more accessories. There was now, a trailer right? this morning that showed uh, you cradle the gamepad, like uh, excuse me, the gamepad, the uh, Switch console, yeah. Itself, yeah. Like, as a baby. You will, oh, in the trailer, like yeah, in I'm just like really. This there's is it in the tra in the one two Switch trailer. There's a bit where the um, the Switch is in like a bassinet, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you've got like run to it. Yes, maybe prize, and you've got like. So the trailer shows sleep. her wow. like put him back to sleep. She puts the the the, the switch uh, down, and then as she leaves, maybe a second pass, and baby starts crying again. I'm just yeah. like, this is not a game. This is real life. Do, do Imagine if it's like a flower baby. You've got to look after your switch controller throughout it's the like, day. Do you remember, we were talking about it in the office the other day. Do you guys remember babysitting mama? Look like cooking mama, and then they brought a babysitting mama, mm -hmm. and it's basically it came with a baby that you stuck the Wiimote in the back. Uh, Velcroed it up, and then you basically looked after a baby. Oh, wow. Like I used to work on official Nintendo magazine, so yeah. like we barely had games. So like wow. when that came in, we were like, "All right, guess we got to review the whole then. issue on this." Yeah, <laughs> that's a cover. That's kind of amazing, um. <laughs> but also the only thing I want less than a baby is something that simulates a baby. Baby, yeah. Like I just know part of me wants that. Yeah, I always, yeah. I never, I never wonder that. Like when you see like toy babies, like this one is crying. It's like. Why is that? Oh, give like me a robot dog. Himself. Himself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that said, I like how creative they're getting with one. Yeah, no, yeah. and, and it, I think definitely like uh, one two switch is the showcase title for like what the what the technology is yeah. about. Yeah, and sort yeah, of yeah. HD rumble as you guys mentioned, included. and like the Joy Con and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. What about arms? What do you guys think of arms? Did you I play love arms. arms. Yeah. Okay, talk I thought about it was that. really good. Yeah. So, like at first glance, it looks like it's just like a silly sort of uh, sort of like motion control game. Mm. But I played it with Joe a couple of times and like, there's actually some decent deep combat in it. Like there was like some really good, like by the third fight that we had, we were doing like proper tactics and mm. we'd already learned blocking and stuff like mm. that. Um, and uh, yeah, cause like you can also choose at the beginning. So I hope this is a big part of it. You choose what kind of like power ups you get. Yes. Um, right. And you have to look at what the other person's getting. And by the third fight, I was looking at what Joe was picking going, okay, cool. So he's going for like long range stuff. Mm. I'm going to try and mm. go for something else. Yeah. Like it seems like there's a lot more to That's it than cool. just like, that. Joe, there's I think made the, com the comparisons yeah. like what Splatoon is to shooters, this is to fighters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then you're like learning about counter systems. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and it is very much about who moves first and how you're going <laughs> to react to it yeah. and, uh, and that mind game because I felt the same way when I played it. Um, just It was against a demonstrator who was very trained. And by the way, JC Rodrigo, if you're listening, <laughs> I don't like you because I got whooped like yeah. in this game. <laughs> But uh, it was a lot of trying to read when he would punch, or right. he was just straight up reading that I was throwing punches like nobody's business. And so he was like, "All right, I'm just gonna weave around and just play with you this whole yeah. fight." Then round two, I switched up and I noticed he like, was like "Oh man, he knows." And yeah, yeah. So there is a depth to it that I Absolutely. don't think uh, some of the commercials are really showing. Oh, I wouldn't folks. have guessed that at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Because it looks really silly. Like yeah, it, it looks really dark. Yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. not uh, it's not wee boxing, which I think no. some people look at it and they're that's like, "Oh, it's just like flail and you're yeah, gonna win." Yeah. It's like, nah, that's not really what this is about. Is it um, exhausting when you play? Like, do you work up a sweat? Nah, it's all right because you only because it's it's very like small movements okay. that you do. You're not. It's not like we boxing where you're like actually yeah. like swinging and stuff like that. Yep. It's really really small it's movements. So precise. On the thing. I yeah. think those Joy-Con controls are super impressive. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like no. Them. For for sure. Um, any other games that stand out to you guys that either or either stood out or didn't? Like you played it and you were like, I just don't get this. I played. Uh, it's Snipper Clips, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yeah. Love it. I like Love that a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it got surprisingly hard as well so for those yeah. who don't know it's basically you play as like a little shape and someone else is another shape and you can cut each other out to make mm. certain shapes that you need to get through obstacles so like good, yeah. one of them you have to sharpen the other player so they can yeah. pop a balloon and one of you has to pull the balloon down so you have to just figure out how to make the correct shapes to get yeah. through these courses and 
I really, really liked it. Like, yeah, I it was spent hours playing that. Well, that's the thing. Like, Joe and I replayed it a couple of times, mm. and we looked at other people playing as well. And like, from looking at other people, like they were solving things in a very different way to oh. we were. So it really reminded me of like Scribble Knots in that way, where it's yeah. just like one person's going to play it one way, another person's going to try it completely another way. Yeah. Um, but we had a great time playing that. Yeah. Like, that's How long it is? Good. Uh, so they have. Yeah. I don't know if they put the number of puzzles out there, but it's a twenty dollar download game. Okay. Um, and more more interesting than me is that it. It's, I believe, one to four players. Right. So I can't Ooh. wait to see what a four-player uh, Snipper Clips mm. puzzle looks like yeah. because it's already hysterical with two people. Yeah, I yeah. can only imagine because uh, there's a lot of like, you could also just mess things up and like cut oh, yeah. pieces off of yeah. people. And, and it, it expects uh, you to do that because it's mm -hmm. the giving you can regenerate really quickly, yep. but there's yeah, a lot yeah. of really dumb decisions. I yeah. Made. We actually solved one uh, without cutting uh, a, like a single piece off of each other. And That's it was cool. because I didn't wrap my brain around, oh, I'm supposed to do that. I was just like, oh, just angle yourself sideways. You got the pen so, all right, now yeah, turn yeah, this yeah. way, jump. And then it was just like trying to that's figure really it cool. out. Yeah, but I like that there are multiple ways to solve things. I yeah. think that's really smart. Being able to game. cut other people was really good as well. Because I was like cutting Joe. He's like, well, have you, why have you done that? <laughs> like, you just cut my, like a massive piece of me off. Just to yeah. be a Which jerk. Just really good. Yeah. good yeah. Let's play game. I feel like that's one that'll yeah, be fun to yeah, kind of see definitely. folks like uh, solve yeah. stuff. I also um, wanted to mention yeah. before we move on, mm -hmm. don't yeah. have a piece about it, that uh, we interviewed Kojima at RTX in Sydney. It was me and Lucy O'Brien from the Australian team. And he said some really interesting stuff about the Switch. It, we weren't the first outlet to cover his thoughts, but he said something that was along the lines of, um, this is the extension of the gamer's dream. Mm -hmm. And he referenced how the Switch kind of takes some examples from uh, transferring, which was uh, a Vita thing that you could do. Basically, yeah, the game. idea that, yeah, basically the idea that you play something on your docked console and then yeah. you can take it with you where, wherever you go. And yeah. he was really impressed by it. I yeah, and imagine they're not going to de develop any games for it, but yeah, Kojima yeah. liking it is a pretty big deal. Yeah, I, I feel like that's kind of the the dream behind this this project, right? Just this idea of a system that you're playing all kinds of games on, mm -hmm. and it has one function at home and it has a different function on the road. Um, there are so many things yeah. that you can have at home and you can take with you. Yep. It, including movies, a lot of Blu-ray DVDs come with. Basically, you can play it at home, and then they have a code, so you can get it on your laptop and take it that's with right, you. That's right. Not a lot of games really offer that. It's just yeah. you have to play it in one setting, and the Switch is one of the first things to ever completely change that. Yep. And and I'm I'm intrigued by it, but I think of every time too. Part of me thinks of every time too that like think of like Kotor, a game that like I loved on on the original Xbox, and how that came out on mobile that works on my phone or it works yeah. on a tablet, and I downloaded it immediately, and I was really excited, and then you know. What happened? I never played it. Yeah. yeah. And so I wonder um, if uh, I if I'll still have the motivation with like Zelda. And I think I will because yeah. that'll be a new game. Whereas like Kotor yeah, is a game I've so. played before. So yeah. maybe that's part of it. Well, I think it's also having the controllers on there. It makes exactly. a huge difference. Big difference. Yeah. I agree. Xbox yeah. kind of does that with the Play Anywhere system, right? You get something on Xbox, you can also have it on PC. But it's still the idea that you can physically take your Switch with the same save file wherever you want to. Yeah. Like yeah. it's different to having a PC in a living room. Yeah, even even what people wanted, where they'd say, "Oh, I want this on 3DS, and I want the save the save to show mm -hmm. up on my way." It's like, no, this is too complicated. Like, yeah. what if it's you're, just you're smushing the two things so. together that shouldn't yeah. really be me? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, I uh, yeah, we're definitely hopeful, and I think so. We'll move on to to round two and just talk a little bit about uh, some new information uh, with Switch that's come out. Uh, a trio of interviews coming from Time Magazine shed some light on some interesting features or, or just interesting quotes out there in general, and we're going to talk about some of them. Uh, so let's start with the. Uh, Right now, it sounds like everything is on the table as far as switch upgrades are con mm. are concerned, and I, I feel like I got to eat a little bit of crow because last week I'm just like, no way would they update the dock only? Like I felt like the console itself, the touchscreen tablet part of yeah. it, would be something that could be up for an upgrade one day. And the quote was basically along the lines of, you know, yeah, they, they folks could if a new version would have come out later, like folks could decide to upgrade to that, and that there's a modular nature to this thing, so it lends kind of itself to. What else can you plug in or slide into those mm. slots on the side of the console mm. itself? Mm. Um, it's like vaping when people upgrade their like crazy <laughs> vape things. So it's like some kind of massive horn and stuff like that. It's gonna be like that's that. what I want for my Switch. Yeah, yeah. massive <laughs> horns. Yeah, um, but but it does come with like a, I mean. It's kind of just an interesting stealth way to get folks involved in an ecosystem, I feel. Mm. Like, I don't know. I can't think of a product like it. Like, what other thing have you ever bought where, like, there were modular components like that that you were able to swap I out? I feel like the uh, Wii Racing Wheel is probably the closest thing to that. It's mm -hmm. That's an accessory that, I mean, it's barely hardware. It's effectively yeah. a piece of plastic, right? But yeah. that is the kind of thing I imagine them doing, yep. is adding in things that are specific to certain oh, games. Right, yeah. yeah, like, so the right is, like, a fishing rod or something yeah. like that. Some crazy stuff yeah. like that. Which is awesome. Like I yeah, love the yeah. idea of that. It's gonna be weird. In public. No, I'm not into fishing. I just, <laughs> <laughs> first thing I thought. Fishing's not great. But aside from that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, all right. So then another one was uh, that there was a confirmation again that VR is still being investigated by Nintendo. Could be a Switch thing. I thought it was interesting how he answered the question, though, because it specifically asked uh, regarding is the launch version powerful enough for this? Mm. Um, and let's keep in mind, like, obviously the launch version of that Switch screen is a 720p screen, which... Mm presumably does not lend itself well to VR. Like VR is, uh, is about a higher resolution experience is my understanding, but I kind of want to talk to some experts uh, to find yeah, out. I think that that would work. The thing yeah. that would confuse me more, like it wouldn't work too differently to Google Cardboard. Mm -hmm. It's just that the Switch is so wide. Yeah. Like how do they... Well, there wasn't that patent a head mounted display that you would just oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's so <laughs> wide, right? Yeah, so I feel yeah. like it has to be just That's much too much. You think so? Yeah. yeah. I, I just think with one of those things, that quote, whether yeah. they just don't want to say no. Yeah. Because VR is like very yeah. topical and you just it's like a big thing right you, now. Yeah. You, you tie yourself into this statement that maybe one day, five yeah. years later, you overturn it. But like So people can't I, criticize yeah, it. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it should do. Like you, this whole switch, like the Wii U people were confused about it. They came out with this very elegant announcement trailer where it's like, I get instantly what this <coughs> is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They shouldn't stray from that yeah. for the first yeah. couple of years. Yeah, this totally is this console that. that you have at home and then you take it with yeah. you and it's the same experience. Yeah. And they should just like drive everything to that, I think, yeah. for the minute. The thing that I like, though, if they were to enter the <coughs> VR space is that I think the Joy-Con controllers would be a very cool VR controller. Like, if yeah. you think yeah. about all the technology yeah. in them, that's the only reason I would be intrigued. But I don't think... Knowing them, I don't think there'd be a game. I think there'd be some kind of strange experience, like you'd be in the Mushroom Kingdom or Hyrule or something mm. where you're like there and they do cool things with art direction, which to me is the more interesting side of VR. Like I'm not, I'm playing RE7 and I love RE7 right now, yeah. but it follows sort of a, a more realistic visual tone. Yeah. And so you kind of see right through it sometimes. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm trapped in a PS2 game. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. At, you know, that's at times. Um, and so. I just feel like, whereas when I played like Res Infinite in VR, I love every second of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's so stylized, and you're just being showered in mm. particle effects. Yeah. That like said, out. comparing the, I mean, we don't know that much about them, but comparing the Joy-Cons to the Oculus Touch controllers, mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff that they're missing that people may be sure. used to by the time that they venture into that. Because, yep. I mean, Oculus Touch and the Vive controllers are incredible, incredibly really good, responsive. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, you can do a thumbs up, and the Touch controller will recognize that motion. That's you can yeah. point, yeah, you yeah. can do a gun with your finger. Like, they, it's, it's, very, very responsive. It's advancing well. Yeah. It yeah. is. Yeah, totally. And I worry that, like, you know, it if they did kind of simulate VR, holes inside it. That's a good point. You don't know how many ice <laughs> cubes are in there. But uh, yeah. given, like, maybe two years, if they venture into VR, I think that the Joy-Cons wouldn't suffice at that point compared yeah. to yeah. the other stuff that's already on the market. Yeah. No, I think, I think like, yeah, well, Krupa's saying, like, they've made it for a very specific thing. Mm -hmm. Like... It, it like it to start doing like other VR stuff it, as you say like it is gonna look not as good yeah and you stretch yeah. it yeah. and it's like this thing. Mm -hmm. I think they've got an awesome opportunity to yeah, like that's a lot of be the marketing. first proper console that you can take with you that's yeah. Yeah. an awesome proposition yeah. and they shouldn't yeah, keep like the size of it no and I yeah. think yeah. you're right yeah. too like, like they don't want to say yeah. Yeah. yeah no and they don't want to say no I think that saying no yeah. makes them look like oh we're not negative and it's just like you yeah like you said you tie yourself into that quote that you live by so when they do do it ah you said this five years ago yeah, no, <laughs> but also true. the idea that it could potentially also support VR along with everything else does excite me. Yeah. Like I don't necessarily want that right now, but the yeah. idea that it could, like, I mean, they've obviously succeeded in what yep. they're trying yep. to do. I'm like, well, cool. Yeah, let's, let's go back to saying it's a modular thing. Like, if people get really into it and they're comfortable with the idea every, f like, three years, like, you upgrade your iPhone, you upgrade the central bit. Yeah. And one year it's powerful enough to do VR without yeah. being cumbersome. That yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, and just back to the point of controllers, I would say that like something <coughs> like a Daydream View, mm. uh, which that's the name of it, right? <coughs> it's a very simple input controller. Like it's not meant to be as sophisticated as a Vive yeah. or as an Oculus. So if they were to do it, I think they could survive in that space. But I do see the point though. Like, yeah, you guys would be a little behind because these controllers are so cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it could be good yeah, enough. They could make their own. Um, speaking of good enough, apparently mm -hmm. it is good enough uh, to... Uh, possibly port more uh, Wii U games to, it seems. Wii U or, I don't know if he meant Wii U or 3DS specifically, but the question was, uh, the context was, could Switch emulate Wii U games? And he answered, uh, this is president of company, uh, Tatsumi Kimishima, in case I haven't made that clear. Uh, yeah, we could do that, or we could remake the game. And then he kind of leaned into it further, said, look, but reminder, like Switch is not backwards compatible with games designed for other systems, currently not compatible with controllers designed for other systems, but support for certain controllers may be considered for a future update. Actually, Some cases, GameCube. yep, or, or uh, you know, you might need your GameCube controller for a Smash port, perhaps. Um, in some cases, games from past systems may be re-released for the Nintendo Switch system as either enhanced or original versions. And that was that part mm. of the quote where, like, okay, like yeah. that's interesting. Uh, to
Yeah, no, that's really good. I think like they're obviously thinking about it. And I think that's the thing with the Wii U because a lot of people did. There's a lot of games that people just haven't played. Yep. Mario um, Kart on there. Yeah. Best example, right? Of yeah. like a really good, good, solid game missing the battle mode that people wanted. So, hey, we did it on Switch. Let's get that right. Mm. Um, but then you run into like Smash Brothers. Like if you were going to do that with Smash and early rumors seem to indicate that, mm. like, is that still going to be fresh if you announce it around December or something like that? I guess it's. You want to if that feels worse if it pushes the next Smash back yeah. several years. Yeah. But we, you know, the big thing that everyone's talking about with the Switch is it doesn't have enough games. So I have no problem with them bringing all these games that a lot of people have never played yeah. and like really bulking out that initial catalog. Absolutely. So when it comes yeah. to like Christmas time, you're like, Actually, there's loads of good stuff on here. Yeah. Loads, yeah. And there's loads of things like they never did for Wii U. They brought Galaxy to Wii U and two, but not in HD. Yeah. Yeah. They can have like this awesome catalog of games that they've put out in the last a five, six years. Want that. Yeah. 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 No, I but agree. if it does push new, if they go, oh, that having that Smash game from the Wii U like ties us over for four years so we don't have to do another Smash game, that's not good. Don't yeah. want that. Yeah. Um, Although I think that last Smash game almost killed Sakurai. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like so many characters, so like that thing yeah. just would not go away. And I love that. Um, Every reveal along the way was an event. It almost was too much because yeah. like, remember it was like a screenshot a day every weekday, mm. plus like new character trailers whenever they came the out. The voting thing. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. I just well, I unless would, they transition it and they make like Smash Light Overwatch. Yeah. yeah, where that this is Smash. This is the version of the Smash, yeah. and we'll add characters and we'll do seasonal events yeah. Yeah. and they keep it going like new stages. Just make everything. Just like evolve it. Like what they want to do with Street <laughs> Fire, where it's not like a, a sequel entry. It's like this is Smash. New thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, totally. I wonder how long they deliberated over having the cartridges instead of the discs for the Switch. Mm. Mm. I mean, the Wii U is backwards compatible. That's one of my favorite things about it because they have an amazing library of Wii and Wii U <coughs> games. There's so many good <coughs> games when you put them yeah. all together. And I feel like if they were to have Wii U games on Switch, it would mostly be digital, I imagine. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I wonder if they were like, okay, we, we cannot make anything backwards compatible if we don't have a disk drive, but it takes up too much space. But then the other issue you run into with the disk drive is that it immediately makes portability a problem, yeah. right? Because the minute there's a spinning instrument inside of it that has to read that disk, and it's kind of like when, remember your disk man? And remember like the yeah. anti-scan oh, that you yeah. would like shake it yeah. like crazy yeah. just Even to check? Even laptops rarely have disk drives anymore. That's right, yeah, yeah. 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 Everyone's kind of pulled away. Yeah. Um, but um, another interesting quote that uh, came out of this is just that Nintendo is not making a successor to 3DS right now. And this makes sense that you have to say this yeah. but was asked uh basically along the lines of hey are you done with two screens and like would you ever make a 3ds successor and he just put it as no we're still thinking of portable systems and we're thinking of ways we'll be able to continue bringing portable gaming systems out uh, so yes we are thinking of different ways but ultimately he said we're just not making one right now yeah. um good idea yeah 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 and also like hey this is but i mean is this technically like it is he saying that just to cover his bases in case this flops, or like I almost feel like where yeah. where does this fall? You know, I guess it's it's really hard for him to say. No, we're still working on a portable thing as well because the portable portability of the Switch is like one of the main selling points of it. So right. then for them to also have another portable device in it, like people are just gonna be like, well, what's the point of this? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Battery life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm kidding. Um, no, I, I hear you, and I, I just feel like uh, it is interesting though to see Nintendo move away from two screens. When at least for the portable, as far as that was concerned, it was really elegant, you know, and mm. it, and it had its time. It, it was fun with DS. It was cool with 3DS. Obviously, not selling as much because the gaming handheld, no matter how cool you make it, mm. yeah, the mobile market has dominated to the point that like no one really wants to carry an extra device around unless you know the, you have a kid. Uh, and it's a bit of an easier proposition. We carry them around sometimes because we care yeah. about a certain game on them, but let's be honest, you know? Yeah. There's some games that, like, I love that a Nintendo, like, on the plane to Australia, I was playing Professor Layton versus uh, Phoenix Ride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Might be the other way around, I don't remember, but I love that game, and I can't yeah, really so imagine good. that working without the dual screen. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could just split the screen in half and have them side by side, but, yeah. like, especially Professor Layton games really just lend themselves to that Yeah, they've been built with that in mind, It yeah. would be yeah, yeah. odd to see it without that, I think. No, I agree, and then uh, it, it even sets up the, have you seen on Wii U when they try to, like, put the two screens on one screen, what that's like, where, like, one is massive and then the other's like this Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or vice versa, or you can have one up there, it just, it was a mess, um, as much as they tried. 
Uh, all right, next thing we got, uh, this was a separate interview, separate quote, but uh, Peter Moore saying, yeah, uh, you know, FIFA is for Switch is actually FIFA 18. Uh, it's being made by EA Vancouver, which is the development home for uh, FIFA series versus like people just assuming, oh, you'd probably just get some like studio no one's ever heard of to port it. Uh, and uh, he described the Switch version as being custom built for Nintendo's platform. Another case where maybe he had to say this, but my thing why didn't you just say this on stage? Why? I know, like, what's changed in the last? Well, presumably yeah. you knew then it was FIFA 18. I don't. I just, it's a bizarre thing because it made more. Um, like, we speculated more about a thing we didn't need to be speculate. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was pointless and yeah. negatively too. Yeah, like, like yeah. It, it not being FIFA 18 made me like, oh, this is gonna be like a bootleg version of FIFA. Yeah. It's not gonna be the same thing. Because that's what they used to do. They used to do it all the time. We used to do so many features on like how they just release a new FIFA, but it's actually FIFA from like two years. ago. Yeah, uh, like yeah. Nintendo version. Yeah, we ran into that with uh, with Vita, which w it was like a prior version and it wasn't quite up to date. Even though yeah. it did have some cool, like uh, they had like back touch features, like yeah. you were able to yeah. like <coughs> shoot a goal by hit picking the corner, like mm -hmm. on the back touch. Mm -hmm. Which you know, back when people were trying, mm -hmm. just saying that was cool. Um, yeah, I just I f when I see things like this, and the further away I get from the presentation, mm -hmm. the further uh, the more I am underwhelmed by yeah. the third party section in general, where I just felt like. You didn't need to get people on stage committing, to, say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> committing yeah. to like, we're going to make a game. Like, no, just just pull out a trailer, have them say two words, get or have Koizumi say the whole thing. But I don't know what that did to help your case No. Yeah, for the system at all. I don't. Yeah, I think it's really confusing. Like, yep. And yeah, needless to say as well. Mm. Like, yeah. Mm. Um, Nintendo's quality of life initiative continues. This is another Kimishima quote, just saying this is still going on. We're just the challenge right now is to create a Nintendo product that will satisfy satisfy consumers. That makes sense. But well done. There's some things that we were talking about yesterday um, that I think would hugely benefit the Switch that they don't currently have. Mm. If I could watch movies on it or read books on it, then I don't need an iPad anymore, basically, and browse the internet, which we know it doesn't have on launch. No, yeah. Which, I mean, those things make it an all-in-one device on the go as well, yeah. which is huge. Like, I, I would totally abandon my Kindle on my iPad if it yeah. did that. So I'm hoping it does eventually because that's how you satisfy consumers. Yeah, it feels right? like they're yeah. purposely not talking about that simply for the reason so. that uh, yeah. they don't have it at launch, and so it's yeah. not really a major selling point. Like, no Netflix, no internet browser, um, although you can make the case who uses internet browsers on a, yeah. like a, a small Netflix would be brilliant yeah. because Netflix now that you can cool. download shows on Netflix mm -hmm. yeah. when you're on the go. I think movies is a huge thing, like, including Netflix, but I guess that that's with licensing i don't yeah. really know also, also interesting what uh, so, sorry what sony and microsoft did on the movie side where they eventually turned into oh we're a destination where you can buy and rent yeah. movies from versus like uh having to sign a, a sign up for amazon or having to sign yeah. up for other services i don't know how many people actually use that i don't mm. know how many people actually download so i used yeah. to on 360 really? i actually bought like five movies on that thing huh. uh, they were all Probably like comic book movies, but yeah, uh, no judgment. This is like a judgment. Eighty percent markup as well. <laughs> well, I think like Spent thirty quid on Iron Man three. <laughs> <laughs> I think Netflix is brilliant because you think about what you could do with Netflix. You can basically replicate what you do with Zelda. Yeah. You're watching the movie, you pick it up, and it's already downloaded, yeah. and you can keep on watching that on the tube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd like so that. appealing. We're gonna get there. Yeah, it, yeah. it feels like we're gonna get there. But did it's the Wii U shame. launch with Netflix? Uh, I don't think it launched with it, but it does. Yeah. Work, it works yeah. quite well. Yeah, as well. it also yeah. launched with TV, which was a thing. You remember that? You yeah. control your TV yeah. with it. Yeah, I actually, like, I, lo I loved yeah. that actually. That I could turn my TV on just with my Wii U and control everything. Yeah, and there was this like whole like you can check what's on cable, and mm. you could yeah. like message your friends and be like, yeah. oh, look at this screenshot from Modern Family. This is so <laughs> cool. The video. You did it once. You're like, yeah, I'll do this all the time. Never again. The video chat thing. Like, I use that all the time. Oh yeah. Like because all the people obviously all the people i knew who had a wii u um like we had a colleague who worked in like a different office mm -hmm. so like we used to chat we, instead of using skype we started using like the wii u because like you can draw on people and stuff like that yeah. it was like it made it like really really fun yeah like i hope it's got some stuff like that um okay and then uh last thing uh on top of just what alana just brought up just the whole internet browser uh, not at launch but uh mm -hmm. The eShop will be up for day one uh, purchases, digital purchases. He pretty much confirmed. Although, I mean, let's go to this quote. Next, uh, whether or not we can confirm it will be there, uh, but we're not sharing further details at this time, which is part of the next segment, but I'm going to let y'all weigh in. I mean, were you okay. guys surprised? Because I feel like everyone's asking me this on Twitter, like, is the eShop up? I'm like, I don't... I <laughs> Well, it's not weird that we're even know. discussing whether that's a thing. Like, yeah. of course you should have your shop ready to go on yeah. day one. Like, yeah. yeah. 
That leads into this next segment. All right, so uh, here we are. And this next segment is mostly talking about, you know, Nintendo. Like, why so secretive? Like, I don't understand. Um, we know right now that the hardware can transform. It's modular. It's the portable console you take with you. That's cool. But here are things that have not been talk, uh, talked about so far. And I feel like this all plays into something that you, I just see in a lot of uh, folks who interact with me on Twitter, that they almost sound paranoid. Yeah. Uh, like hardcore Nintendo fans are almost trained to be afraid when there isn't an answer. Um, yeah. So the following has not been discussed. Number one, virtual console. And just the whole idea of Nintendo's back catalog with respect to Switch. Nothing. So. And that's super important, too, because it's that directly impacts upon the actual value of the console. If I can carry an account over from my Wii U to my Switch and keep my existing purchases, that gives me a dramatically larger game library. Mm -hmm. like, I think that's really important. But, and the fact that they haven't announced that makes you think that's it, not It true. does, yeah. which it because might not a, be. But it feels like that would be a great selling point. Yes. The fact that you haven't said it makes you suspicious. No, <laughs> like, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And also because historically they've not been good at having a unified system for all that. Uh, kind of stuff. Yeah. For all the talk that they've been wanting to improve on it and they're aware of the feedback, I will say that when I bought my PS4, that was my favorite thing about it when I got mm. it at launch was I booted up the console and immediately I had like five games yeah. Yeah. when I had just bought one retail game. And that's yeah, a cool yeah. feeling. That's something that further evangelizes your, your box and gets yeah. people excited. Mm. And especially when you've got probably the strongest first party catalog uh, of, yeah. of the, the big three, right? Yeah. Like let's, let's not pretend that's not a thing. Yeah, it's frustrating because you think, because they do have this incredible back catalog of games. Yeah. You want them almost like to present it in like a, a digital museum. Yeah. You can enter yeah. it and play stuff and they could preserve it. And it's like this awesome Nintendo archive. Yeah. Like that would be huge. Yeah. Especially like, because it's portable. Like I yeah. can play any of the last, 20 years of games that I have loved yeah. on Nintendo yeah. wherever I want. That's such a selling point. It's, yeah. I mean, Jose, do you think that because they haven't spoken about it, it means it's not a thing? I think if they don't talk about it within the next two weeks, it's not a thing. Mm. I feel like... Um, I feel like anything is still up for grabs because this is such a new way to kind of un uh, unfold how a console is going to yeah. gonna launch and all the features to it. And I feel like they got one part of the message so right, which was just like, hey, here's what the hardware does. Yeah. Yeah. And this is an important detail that it just feels like uh, if you don't talk about it in the next two weeks, it's obviously not happening. I, I just wonder maybe like their internal strategy meetings is we just have to go all in on that because the Wii U is such a confusing announcement. I remember yeah. when the Xbox One was announced and they announced 400 things it could do. Yeah. And they were making original TV so shows bad. and movies yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's okay, and too much. Yeah, yeah you're right. And whether they just gone, let's we can announce all this later, but from now until launch, we're going to focus on, on yeah. taking it out of that dock and also how cool the Joy-Cons are. Yeah. And it's yeah. worked. The, like the pre-orders are, do are doing well. Like according to uh, the, one of the quotes from the interview that I didn't talk about was, you know, they're promising 2 million shipped by the end of March, which is the mm -hmm. end of Nintendo's fiscal year. And the, they're ramping up production, which hopefully means a lot. I mean, with Nintendo, again, we're kind of trained to worry because they're they've making, had some problems. making four more. Yeah. <laughs> Two million and four for the next <laughs> quarter. But I think that, that kind of helped, like, the Wii, I think, because, mm -hmm. like, you couldn't get a Wii anywhere. Absolutely like that with Amiibo. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's just, like, it, it, it creates this sort of culture of, like, oh, I really want one, like... Because even if you didn't want one, because you can't have it. I you're think like, oh, I really it kind of works against the Switch, though, right? Because a really easy way for the Switch to get sales is you take it to the casual gamer's house, someone yeah. who doesn't really play games, and they see this cool thing and have yeah, to interact yeah. with it. And they're like, oh, I totally want to buy one of those. And then they're yeah. like, what? I can't? Eh, never mind. And then they yeah. think about it. Yeah, they're not going to persevere. No, that's fair. No. Yeah. And I think for those people who this does appeal to in a way that Xbox and PlayStation doesn't, they yeah. really need to get on that. Yeah, because those, be, those yeah. people, it's like an impulse buy. Like they, like they play yeah, one, yeah, two yeah. Switch, and they're like, oh, the best time ever. I need yeah, yeah. Exactly. It. I'm going to sound like a crazy man. Have you played Snip Eclipse? Like, hang on for a second. Let me just give yeah. you a controller. Just I yeah. want to show stand. it to my mom so bad. Like, yeah. be like, play this. Like, she loves the Wii U and she has a 3DS. And I'm like, you also you use your iPad it. a lot. You, you're going to love this thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's hard to sell without showing it to her. But even if I did, in theory, she wouldn't be able to buy one because they don't have supply right now. And, and Nintendo nostalgia can be so powerful, right? I mean, look at the NES Classic, which, I mean, they've come out and said, like, hey, we, we definitely didn't anticipate the numbers we yeah. got. And I mean, who could have, right? Like, I mean, Genesis has had that device. Atari has had that device. I yeah. feel like no one really shed a, like anything. I felt like it came and went and sure, some people were really excited, but it wasn't to the level of that thing. Mm. That yeah, thing was yeah, on yeah. a whole nother, nother level. A really cute quote we got from Kojima was he said he was saying that he really wanted the US version of 
the uh, mini NES because it comes with Punch Out. And apparently the like Famicom version doesn't come with Punch Out. Yeah, that's right. I like, yeah. just really want to play Punch Out. Wow. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have taken him as a fan. That's cool. Really? Yeah, yeah. I love Punch Out. Two hundred dollars, Kojima. <laughs> Talk to me. He's got it. He's got it. <laughs> yeah. I do. Um, all right. Uh, another thing that has been mysteriously left out: uh, general user experience. And what I mean mm. by that is not the portable console to home. Like we've seen people t- rip it out of the dock yeah. in almost every video. I'm talking about when you are browsing around that UI, yeah. like what is that like? Like when I when I run into someone with a switch on the street, can I just can we be friends right then and there? Mm, yeah. Like what what kind of communication is there between you and your friends on day one? We know okay. there's the third party mobile app for online communication. Well there's a there's a there's I'm still really confused about what yeah. that is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't are. really know. I think that that is what facilitates <coughs> voice chat. Yeah. Mm. That's been so what they've said. Yeah. Like does that mean that if you want to find <laughs> someone on the street what, what can we use to facilitate voice chat? Phones? Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> you know what we thought, were doing it. on Wii U? We were doing freaking Hangouts calls on, yeah. on Splatoon. Like me, Pear, and other folks in this office that, uh, yeah, that that's, yeah, don't get me started. I mean, yeah, if I want to friend someone that I that I meet, does it mean that I have to, like, friend them on my phone rather than on the Switch? Oh, it doesn't yeah. have Street Pass, does it? No. no. No, they've said that. That's bonkers. Yeah. That would be a great system Street to Pass people. games are some yeah. of the best games on 3DS. I agree. Like, yeah. they're yeah. so good and so much fun. What's that most recent one with, like, the ninja that gets fired out of a cannon and yeah. you're trying to grab, like, <laughs> the different items you need to kill a boss on top yeah. of a yeah. mountain? It's it's the wackiest concept in the world. Yeah. Uh, but, but it's a lot of fun. But, yeah, I feel like just things like that, regardless of pre-order sales, regardless of, of, of numbers and how well this thing seems to be doing, yeah. it's like you got to give people something new to talk about, uh, before, I feel like, yeah. before this thing we've comes seen out. A snippet of the UI from like a dev tweet that oh, they were yeah. meant yeah. to do. So we've seen like <coughs> yes. kind of what the user interface looks like. It's white. That's it. I saw. Yeah. I thought it was a black one that we saw. Was it? I think there's really? two versions. I think you, yeah. so. You yeah. Can oh, so that you can themes. switch. Yeah. Oh. yeah. We've gotten yeah, yeah, yeah. very That's few DST. details. Like there was like a, they answered some email questions and like one of them was like, hey, uh, you can uh, switch. Uh, e-shops by having a different account for each region and you can have up to eight accounts per system there have been like little things like that but i'm just yeah. surprised for nintendo a company that loves to sort of over market things or market things in a very japanese way not a word yeah, it's like, yeah. i mean i think that, we'll that you might be right in saying they're trying to focus on the one thing yeah. above all yeah, else which is the appeal of yeah, and they maybe just think like you know also like ui that's the thing we care about yeah well, the l- yeah, yeah like a lot of mainstream people like, if they dropped an asset it's like the switch and like the last thing they saw was this really cool lifestyle video yeah. the next one's like here's what the loading screen looks like yeah yeah. Like, oh. yeah yeah but that doesn't stop like like apple from like i remember when the apple watch was coming out i was so intrigued by it yeah. I, every well, time yeah, they had a video come out you'd see and so you turn the digital crown and this is what mm-hmm. happens when you get a phone call. And I would, yeah. I would be all over that video. I bet you there are plenty of people who would be all over uh, yeah. the equivalent yeah. for, for Nintendo. I guess I'm not that interested in seeing the UI because I'm just expecting it to look like the Wii U. All right. Like I'm just expecting tiles, you know? Yeah, yeah. expecting yeah. A, a thing I can flip through. I just... Sterile, I, not very much personality. Because yeah. Wii U had some personality. Well, you when, put it up um, and you had an army like, of people oh, on it. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah or when you do like um, yeah. file transfers and Pikmin uh, carried across yeah. your data. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Awesome. Yeah. That was cute. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe they're just trying to keep that stuff under wraps, right? Yeah. yeah. The, the Pikmin thing is really sad. Did you, where were we talking about the other day? And there's like the really sad... So look, you know when you uh, transfer your system uh, update from like one 3DS to another? It's Pikmin that takes them all across. And then, so on the 3DS, and then one Pikmin gets left behind. Really? Yeah. Oh. How sad and he's got to stay on the old and one. He's stay on the old one, yeah. That is really sad. That is really that. sad. Oh. Did not notice. Heartbreaking. I know. Yeah. Someone told me that the other day, and it actually broke my heart. I was oh. like, oh my God, it's just in like my house <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Shed a tear. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, th- we do. Uh, Gav, you brought this up, but also, yeah. like, what what is replacing Meverse? Like, Man. they've said Meverse is not coming along, but they've yeah. said you can, sh- you know, take screenshots. And it's like, well, then what are you doing here? Yeah. Like, the, how's that going to work? The Wii U Meverse, I think, is one of the coolest communities, like, of any gaming console or anything. Like, so many talented people, like, doing amazing drawings. Like, yeah, as I said, I used to work on the official Nintendo magazine. We used to have, like, six pages dedicated to Meverse because oh. there was so many amazing, like, artists and stuff hanging out in there. Like, Sakurai was always there. Yeah. Like, and people were, like, drawing stuff. Like, there was this really weird... Uh, in the Rabbids, uh, like sort of sub uh, Meverse bit, there was this really weird thing where everyone was drawing pictures of Willem Dafoe for <laughs> months. 
And it was just like all these amazing pictures of Willem <laughs> Dafoe. Like some really funny stuff going on there. And like, I'd be absolutely gutted if they don't have something like that. Yeah, yeah. Because I, like, I used to hang out, like not hang out, but I used to be like in the Amoeba. You just like hung out. Yeah. It's all right. Let, yeah. let it okay, go. Yeah. No, I used to hang he out He loves Willem Dafoe. Yeah, like mm-hmm. for ages. And it was just like, just going, like I'd spend hours on it, just looking at all the different stuff that people have done, like yeah. little jokes and things like that. Like, oh, it was so good. I'm tempted before I continue going down this Meverse rabbit mm. hole, I kind of want to talk a little bit about your time at official Nintendo yeah. UK magazine. That's that right. Yeah, yeah. Can you talk about any of that at all? Yeah. Like, okay, well, so what was that like? Like, what, what sort of the format? How close are you to like information and, and news when you were doing that? Or what was the experience like? Like, when did you get hired? Uh, I got hired like uh, I was used to, I was working on like a sports uh, TV show, and then I got hired to do like a, a weekly video show called. Um, Nintendo TV. I don't know why I could not remember that. Name. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> difficult. It was called Nintendo. No. Um, um, basically, so I was like, I was, but then I started working with the official Nintendo magazine guys to do that. So as part of that, I was like writing for the magazine and stuff. But yeah, it was one of those things where you've got to make an entire magazine about Nintendo stuff at times when either people didn't like Nintendo or there was nothing coming out. Um, and the ima- like, I remember having to do. There was like one E3 where like nothing happened. So we did like, and we were trying to meet with Nintendo to be like, hey, we're your official guys. Like, what's going on? And they like, they were like, nothing. Like, we we got awful access and stuff I like that. I had to make weekly um, news videos for Zelda Universe. Yeah. Uh, every week <laughs> or over a year, I think. Yeah. Uh, that was hard. There's not like, always a Zelda. <laughs> oh my god! What are you talking about? Oh, we would yeah. do. I would like some weeks. I would be like, "Here's some cool fan art." Like yeah. it was like I just I had nothing to say. Oh yeah, so. fan art was massive. Oh, that's like six pages. I only got six pages of reviews. So. Yeah. Um, it was really hard as well. It was like when like you know it'd be like we'd be gearing up towards like a really big game and then because like. Um, I wasn't a massive fan of Donkey Kong Country Returns, even though I love Donkey Kong Country. Mm. And it's like, you spend so much of your life writing and making videos about one thing. And then when it comes out, you're just like, oh, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like it, it's too hard <laughs> and stuff like that. But then it also means like, like I've got a huge, um, like especially when the Wii U first came out, because like the amount of games that I played that are actually quite rubbish games, but I just still love them. Like The Cave, mm. I think The Cave is a particularly good game, but yeah. it was like one of four games that we had. Finally so it was had just it. like, yeah. yeah. And it's like that one, what was the people who did um, uh, World of Goo, who did like the fire game? Oh, like, Little Inferno. Yeah, yeah Little Inferno. Right, like, that, yeah. that's not a good game, but <laughs> <laughs> like, I love that. because it was game like, where you burn it, stuff. Because it was on Wii U. Like, <laughs> actually, no, that is a good game. Yeah. Uh, but it's just very, very strange. But yeah, you, you have a little, you end up loving these little things that nobody else loves, like Tank, Tank, Tank. Who else likes Tank, Tank, Tank? I like Tank, Tank, Tank. Good man. Well, my favorite game is a bad game. It's Deadly Premonition. Okay, It's a yeah. truly terrible game, but yeah. it's my favorite game. Like, as a game, wouldn't recommend oh, anyone plays it. Tank, Tank, Tank's yeah. better than Deadly Premonition. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a, a favorite story or a favorite thing that you worked on while you were there? Or something that just blew your mind the day that it happened? Oh, actually, like, we were one of the first people to see Zombie U. Mm. Um, so Chambu. yeah so <laughs> it, we went to the uh, Ubisoft Montpellier offices mm. um, and there was a, like a, like Ubisoft Montpellier is like one of the coolest times I've ever had and it's like w- like I interviewed like Michelle Ancel on like the last it was basically their rap party for Rayman Origins mm. and I was in the middle of an interview with him and uh, he was like he's just an amazing person anyway mm. but it was like on the beach and it was this amazing sort <laughs> of like French party you and guys did, make out? Very close. Pretty romantic. But like I was interviewing him and in the middle of the interview, he's like, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just going to go over here and play with my band. And then he just like got up in the middle of the interview. I was just filming by myself. Like he walked over and then played a cover of uh, Get Lucky with his band. Well, and now he, I'm mad at you for not making And he was on the, the bongos. Amazing. That was amazing. <laughs> But there was, there was this really awkward moment in Zombie U, like we went to see it and it's like, obviously it's based in London, so mm. they were really excited to have us there and they were like, oh, like, look at this, like, they were showing us like all these different places, like, yeah, we went to London on this big, like, recce and we were like, taking all these photos and stuff like that and they were like, I don't know if you remember, like, I love Zombie U, I think it's brilliant, mm-hmm. um, but your sort of uh, head, like, headquarters mm-hmm. was in, uh, like, an underground, an underground station, right. but they set it in Shadwell, which is not an underground station, Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like it's overground, <laughs> and it was this really awkward moment. This is like a month before it came out, so it was this really awkward moment. They were like, "Yeah, so like, um, do you, have you ever been a Shadwell?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. And they, they were like, "I was like, I don't live very far from Shadwell." And they were like, "Oh yeah, so like, you know, it's, it's based in that underground." I was like, "I like I don't want to be a clown here, but like, just so you know, Shadwell is not 
um, <laughs> on the oh, underground. Boy. Like, so it wouldn't have that logo. It would have mm. like an orange logo. The boss is like fuming. He's like, what did you do on this research? Yeah. <laughs> like, a lot of photos of pubs. Like the pubs are really good in the game. Yeah. But Shadwell is terrible. That as well. They got their, like on that same trip though, they got their uh, revenge because they gave us a bunch of like screenshots and stuff. And on one of the uh, screenshots was just like, obviously people, it, it's a zombie apocalypse. So people just writing stuff on walls mm. and stuff like that in the world. Yeah. And someone had just written F you uh, on some wall. And then we ran a screenshot of that in official Nintendo magazine without realizing. Uh, and that went out to a bunch of kids. Right. <laughs> Can I ask how um, stuff works right uh, ethically for you working for that magazine? Like, yeah. is it f is funded by Nintendo? No. So there's really no pressure to report on anything positively. Like, we had a license with them, but mm. um, so I think, I don't know who paid who for mm. whatever, but like, Just use the name. yeah, but we never got anything. I mean, that's like, good though. Yeah, like it, it would be really sad it. when you'd be like, we ne like we never got interview it got an interview like Miyamoto or anything like that, and then oh. we'd see like other places getting. Actually, we'd look at IGN and be like, "Oh, IGN just got access to Miyamoto E three. We turn up and like they wouldn't even let us play the games for oh, like man. more than once. Like so, it was pretty bad. We're throwing yeah. a fit, but it was We're also official Nintendo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I was like, this <laughs> If you know who I am, no. Yeah, if you can make forty eight pages about like Nintendo every single month, like it was a really really good laugh. So yeah. that's good. That sounds yeah. awesome. Uh, for anyone listening, uh, if you're not familiar with who Michelle Ansel is, let's assume yeah. someone out there is like, who the heck is that? Yeah. Give them the short version. I mean, we're talking about Rayman Creator. We're also yeah. talking about Beyond Good and Evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like one of the, I think he's one of the most amazing developers. Like, um, there was like, we went, we went to see Zombie U as well. Like, he started out in that studio. And like, it's a really boring studio. It's like offices, like white walls and stuff like that. And when his team were working on Rayman Origins, he was like, nah this won't do and he took his entire team bought a villa in town and moved this entire sort of development team into a villa and was like this is where we make games now and you walk in and it was just like this place is amazing yeah like people were making really cool stuff yeah like, no he he's he's quite uh the the I don't want to call him the character, but he is a very interesting fellow in that yeah, yeah. he has that much pull within the organization. Yeah. Like his yeah. team, you yourself have a lot included. of those kind of individuals yeah. who they they've do. empowered and just go, like, yeah, you you do crazy stuff. That's That's your job yeah. can just be you can just create folders full of ideas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, on the press side, we're like, can we talk to Michelle Lanza? Like, nope, he yeah. won't talk to you. Really? Nope. And you're like. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't. That's because I, I reckon with him they'd just be afraid of what he'd like. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. No. he's just gonna go off on one. Like no, also, no. like who is the guy that Joe interviewed recently? Tommy, um, oh, I can't remember his name, but another guy at Ubisoft. Anyway, he's like Tommy Francois. That's it. Yeah. Tommy Francois. And he's he's like, amazing, and he's like an amazing dude who's worked on like a bunch of stuff. I interviewed him once when he was working on Assassin's Creed. What was he working on when Joe? Um, I think it was just general general stuff. Ubisoft yeah. stuff. Yeah, but he's like this really eccentric dude, and uh, like. Did Joe ever put that interview up? Because like some of the stuff. No, we still we still got it. We still got it. We don't know how to quite frame it, but <laughs> it is one of those things. Like every no, now like, and again, we go he, back to. Here's the like... mad genius that works inside <laughs> Ubisoft because yeah. he goes on these like amazing metaphors. Yeah, and just wow. Talking about like dreamscapes so, and dreamscapes, like Salvador yeah. Dali, yeah. just like bonkers that stuff. That sounds amazing. And that's then well, that's I saw him do. Um, I saw games, him do a lecture at like BAFTA in London, and his job is to go and make research files when they're like developing a game. So he just comes to San Francisco and just go around filming every part of the city oh. for Watch Dogs 2. Yeah. And he'll just make folders that he will give to the art team and the yeah. devs and go, this is the Bible for Watch Dogs 2. Yeah. And they basically they'll go and shoot like 200 hours of footage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. And that's his job. Doesn't that's sound good. half bad. Yeah. yeah. Very, very. I think they made steep because they wanted to go skiing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for sharing. I no worries, really appreciate man. Those stories. Let's uh, let's move on then to uh, round four, and we're going to talk about uh, everyone's favorite section, the question block. So these are uh, viewer and listener submitted questions. Uh, send them to us at mvc at ign .com. We always are open to try and answer some of them. And this one is one we've been getting for a while. I've been meaning to get to it, and now we have the time. Uh, let me just make sure I have all the uh, the pages set. I do. All right. Uh, so this one is from um, Hi. I'm Marshall Grudick, and uh, I'm proud to have autism. And I have a question about Metroid and its 30th anniversary uh, from last year. He says, do you think Metroid is just a very complex Nintendo franchise to promote, market, recognize, and more importantly, that it doesn't have the wide popular range as Mario, Zelda, and Pokemon? He feels that of all Nintendo's franchises, it's just tricky with Metroid. Uh, and it's driven by, he feels that it's a character driven by one franchise, doesn't have a vast world of characters and history to connect with, like, you know, Hyrule, for example. 
And uh, as much as he likes some of the games, he feels like they're not Mass Effect famous or even Boba Fett famous, he, he jokingly calls it. Like, what do you guys think? Yeah, I guess it is quite hard. But also, when you think about it, it's, like, it's quite an easy... It should be the easiest game to yeah. make because it's a lady what? with a gun. Yep. Like, Space-based first-person shooter. Boom, done. On GameCube, that's maybe... Which was a super popular franchise, yeah, yeah, yeah. genre, like in video games, yeah. yeah. Like it, especially once Halo hit, it was like you could do sci-fi to death. And I yeah. feel like you saw the Prime games, but then nothing. Well, also, yeah. how many games do we still describe as Metroidvania? Yeah, like Dark yeah. Souls. Like that's a format people really dig, and lots yeah. of other games are doing it now, and mm. Nintendo aren't doing it. So I think I wonder if it's because it's not seen as as family friendly. Mm. The sci-fi aspect, it's not, yeah. you know, it's not as colorful as a Mario. Other M was Pokemon. dark. Like, yeah. I like Other M, yeah. but, like, that's a really dark game yeah. about, like, a weird relationship between, like, a soldier and her sort of, like, boss. Yeah. Mm. Like, yeah. it's so strange. Maybe they don't, yeah. they don't want to do that kind of thing again. I don't really yeah. know, but, like, I mean, they definitely aren't as popular as, say, Pokemon or... or mm. uh, no. And, I mean, but everyone I know who has played Metroid, loves Metroid. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't think I know anyone who hates Metroid. I'm sure and that's it's people, the, but... Yeah, and that's the thing that I find strange is because Metroid is one of the Nintendo franchises that, like, critically yeah. have been reviewed so well. Like, you look at Super Metroid, which is considered one of the yeah. greatest 16-bit games yeah, like, of yeah. generation. You have Metroid Prime, which is, again, considered one of the greatest of its time. Yeah. Um, and you're talking about a franchise that, uh, for the most part, Federation Force and other M aside, mm. have had lots of critical praise. But we do see examples of games that, like, regardless of critical praise, they just don't end up selling well either yeah. because of lower marketing budgets or um, just they just didn't catch on. Like, Sands of Time is, I thought, one of my favorite Prince of Persia mm. games of yeah. all time. Tanked, like, didn't do oh, well. Yeah, yeah, it didn't sell well. It's one of those classic uh, examples of 9.0 or higher on the review scale, but then nobody bought it. Yeah. I feel that way about Dishonored 2 right now. It's my game of the year last year, and it just hasn't sold very well. Yeah, and it's yeah. a fantastic game. Yeah, no, I love that game a lot. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a tricky thing to solve, but I don't know if it's necessarily at fault because it's not uh, as accessible as Mario or Zelda. I, I just think somewhere in between, some, something's getting lost between the critic 10.0, whatever, yeah. that they give the last Metroid, and when it's coming out. I don't know. It's got to be a marketing thing. Like, I just don't get it. It has to be, yeah. yeah. I, I wonder if it's like they don't know what to do with the tone when marketing it, but I, I think we'll see another Metroid game. Yeah. yeah. It's not done. Yeah. Not really. yeah. Agree. All right. Uh, next one. Um, this email comes from Dan, who is a lifelong uh, Nintendo fan. It hasn't missed an episode of MVC, he says. Thank you, Dan. Um, so some thoughts on the smartphone app uh, voice chat thing that uh, we have all been here <laughs> just perplexed about. On other consoles, headsets uh, connect to the controller, but with Switch, it doesn't seem to be that simple. If you're in portable mode, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And when you're docked and you don't have the, you're not close uh, to the system or not close to the console or have audio jacks in all of your controllers, what about games like ARMS where like you're using the Joy-Con separately? Yeah. If you were to plug in a controller, he's asking, do you think they consider it too awkward to unplug and replug when switching controllers too costly to add or just too costly to add 3.5 millimeter jacks i don't think it's the second i think it's more the yeah. first yeah um versus uh we've also speculated on the show it's a battery thing where like if you're online that has to be an issue too yeah but i think he makes a good point right you're playing arms where are you what plugging you do? That and also like yeah. if you've got headphones in you not that's going to really affect your experience with the game audio yeah. i don't yeah, how when you that throw works. a punch, yeah. like it, it, I guess that slack, like that would be a little weird. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't ooh, hang on, I lost you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Grab the> <laughs> I, uh, in terms of audio, have no issue with the mobile app. Like I've played games online with people in Australia who have terrible <laughs> connections because mm -hmm. you know, that sucks. So we would just talk over FaceTime instead of talking over like Xbox Live or PSN. Right, okay, and yeah. So I have no problem with that whatsoever. The, the thing that's strange to me is the idea that I would need a, a mobile app to friends list or send messages. That's yeah. odd. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I agree. Log logistically, I hadn't even thought about that. It doesn't make sense to have an audio jack in the Joy-Cons, especially like which one would you have it in? Both. Yeah. Like that doesn't really make sense. Yeah, like, yeah. no, that's true. Um, and, and to... Uh there was something to your point. Yeah, they. It, it's funny to me that like we right now know you can probably friend a person through the app, but we have no idea if the console can do it. And to me, that is yeah. bonkers. Yeah. Like, yeah, that is just straight up something out of like a really bad story. I'm like, yeah. how is this possible? Yeah, that we know this, but we don't know that. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh. Next question. Uh. This one is a super deep dive into Zelda. And this is our. Uh. We got one more after it. This one's also kind of long. <laughs> All right. Also, I forgot to write the person's name. I'm so sorry, whoever you are. Uh, <laughs> Good job. Man, I usually get this right. All right. So um, 
basically, we have a new Zelda installment that's about to come out, and we know that critically, Nintendo uh, Zelda has done well in the past due to you know technical innovations, unique gameplay, or storytelling elements, or just the epic trek through Hyrule, is how he frames it. He's wondering, for those who have had the opportunity to play it, what is going to set this game apart? not only from the Zelda franchise, but also from other open world games. Do you think there is something about Breath of the Wild that does set it apart, or do you think that this game will be criticized for being too similar to the slew of open world action adventure RPGs that have trickled out of the West for the past few years? Skyrim, Witcher, also the imminent Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, like when we played Zelda for the first time at E3, like everyone was like buzzing about it. Yeah. But it was really weird. I think I spoke to Sam about this. Everyone was coming back and praising it for things that I've done in loads of other games for years. Yeah. And it's almost like we were appreciating the fact that Nintendo had acknowledged yeah. new <clears throat> mechanics that other people have innovated. Yeah. yeah. And that, I found that strange because that's not the thing that kind of appealed to me initially. I think the thing from the last trailer that I think could set this one apart is story. Yeah. The fact that they've got a voice cast mm. could make this more engaging yeah. a narrative than any previous even Zelda that game. sounds like you're praising them for them getting there versus yeah. like yeah. Yeah. Doing yeah. It for you. Yeah, yeah. Just to no, play no, no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, it's, I mean, it's, yeah. it's a tough question. Uh, weirdly enough, one of the things that appeals to me the most, especially as someone who hates cooking, is the cooking. Like, I really <laughs> like the survival elements in it that I've played. I don't, I like, I don't know why I'm drawn to that, but I feel like it's quirky in a way that the other games listed aren't necessarily. Um, and I also just really like the, the kind of, cartoony aesthetic of taking something like Skyrim or The Witcher and putting it in something that is really bright and beautiful and more like a fairy tale than a gritty medieval fantasy makes it different mm. to me for mm -hmm, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, there are definitely similarities to other open world games and I, I feel like Zelda won't let me down and will have innovations of its own um, but at the same time that the puzzle formula like knowing that that's going to be there knowing that we have different races like Gorons that sure I love the nostalgia but it's mm -hmm. There's enough variety of stuff yeah. that I know will be as a staple of Zelda as well as the open world stuff that, you know, I'm sold. I can't an answer on this, but I'll let you go next. I think the thing that sets apart is it's a Zelda game. Like, it's better. Zelda games are just amazing, and they're <laughs> better than, like, most, uh, like, adventure games. And now it's just them trying, like, an open world version of it as well. Like, that's what's going to set it apart. Like, mm. it's got Link in it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's better than Skyrim already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the thing that stands out to me, and I agree with Krupa, that uh, s you could definitely interpret some of the, the high praise out of E3 as, oh, well, other games have been doing this for years. Why is it special when Nintendo all of a sudden gets there? I did feel, though, that you know, in the open world games I've played, there are adventures that I stumble into, but I didn't feel like the world was playing the biggest part in that. And mm. what I mean by that is like how interactive this world seems to be. Where, like you're chopping down trees or like you're cooking mm. or like you're sort of... Minecrafty um, in a way. Yeah, mm. just kind of wandering into these adventures um, and how they seem to make sense where like something as simple as just like, hey, I've got this club that I stole from the enemy. I'm just going to put it in front of a fire. Yeah. And there's just this level of interaction that I think other games have definitely done before. But when you think about, like, you set off a trap in Skyrim, it's sort of you find the switch and it's like, do you want to activate the trap? Yes or no. Whereas in this one, you just straight up push a boulder off the yeah. edge of a, of a hill and it just rolls down oh, yeah. and takes out some bokoblin. And I feel like there's a language and a grammar to that world that the more I play it, the more interesting it is potentially can be and i haven't played enough of it to really know yeah i it. think hopefully it's that, that fantasy fulfillment where we've all played other games for years since we were kids and you'll probably remember hyrule in like ocarina or be before that being like that mm -hmm. like you'll go back and go, yeah it's this huge open world like yeah if you go back it's not really uh, yeah. but this could yeah. be that finally yeah, totally yeah, yeah. well and this is coming from someone too who like i i have nothing but unending respect for like the cd project red guys and mm -hmm. and the world they made say, with the witcher. witcher is amazing um really the good. one thing the Witcher didn't uh, do right for me was combat. I constantly felt like the early going combat, I felt like I wasn't uh, either wrapping my head around it right or uh, it, it is definitely dense and deep, but it was something that I felt like I was like scratching enemies with a pencil. You yeah. know, like it wasn't like yeah. I didn't feel like and when I took a heavy swing. So much I was better strong. in uh, three than two as well. Like yeah. Two is even worse. Like yeah. that. But um, yeah. And so with with this game, with Zelda, especially, I feel it's more approachable. It's easier to kind of get in, much like a like a Minecraft to an extent, not in terms of combat, but in terms of approachability. And in yeah. terms of like, I'm in this world, there are rules to it that somehow make sense. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I just want to 
fly on a kite, let go, slow mo, shoot that guy, shoot that guy, like just yeah. live out the Lego lust fantasy <laughs> <laughs> in high roll. You've been wanting um, that game for years, haven't yeah. you? <laughs> I, I kind of have, um, and I feel like you know we got a taste of it with a link between worlds, but it still felt small. Whereas when you look out at what this game is basically promising you, like you're going to climb any any mountain, which, uh, again, you can point at some other games. And I don't think they promised that, but that's definitely something that may or may not have made it in. Um, I'm just fascinated by that and how yeah. you're able to, like, mess with the world. Like, I can make a potion that's going to make me hang onto walls for triple the time. Yeah. I can climb the highest mountain and be like, yeah, I did that. Mm -hmm. um, I think like that, I don't know, I've, I've obviously put a lot of thought into this, but I just, <laughs> <laughs> I, just I feel like um, these, these are the things I'm curious to find out how they deliver on, and I definitely, yeah. I mean, as the guy who's going to take the bullet on the review, I'm just like, uh, yeah. we'll see. Sorry about the death threats in advance. Yeah. yeah. Not thanks. from me. Yeah. Maybe. No, yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Yeah, but I'm, yeah, you only sit two deaths away. I'm going to have to be a, a, a it's it's on Slack. It's like, I know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just changed my profile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's Alana, like, upside down. <laughs> um, all right, so this is our last question, and then we got to go. Uh, this one is from uh, Paul. I remember to write your name down. Uh, New York, who says, uh, so this morning... Uh, or the morning of this email, he got uh, what he considers the single most important announcement for Switch so far, which was that this version of FIFA is coming to Switch. Um, FIFA being the biggest sports franchise in the world, getting a proper Switch version will uh, definitely boost overall interest outside of the traditional gaming slash Nintendo demographic. And I just want to agree with Paul here that there's some truth to this. Like we look yeah. at NPD sales charts in, in, in the West. I don't know what you guys see in, in Europe per se, like which list you check out, but you always see the sports titles high up there. NBA Good, 2K, yeah. FIFA... Um, depending they have on an installed fan base. They're going to buy every single one of those games, no matter what. Yeah. Like, you know, every year, like ninety percent of those people are going to come back. FIFA, and that's all they buy. Isn't it crazy that FIFA sells more than all the other ones combined? Oh, dude, soccer is just. I, I love something it. like that. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, soccer is just this global sport. It's yeah. unlike anything, right? Like baseball has its niche. Fo American football has its yeah. niche, but but uh, soccer slash uh, football overseas is just incredible. Mm. Um, I love it. As someone who is more recent fan within the last five years, I think that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, so he asked, what are your thoughts of this announcement and other franchises, uh, oh, excuse me, and what other franchises do you think could transcend the traditional gamer and would really spell success for the system? And Call of Duty and Battlefield mean success, but I don't know how well they would work on the Switch or if that's the right market. Um, but yeah. yeah, for sure, NBA. Like, mm -hmm. sports games, obviously, huge thing. But like, if those are, it's interesting. So he's already tempted by the Switch because if you're into like, FIFA or Call of Duty, you already have the console that can do that. Yeah. Probably so right play now, what console. you, yeah. Yeah. Well, just the idea that you can take it out, I, I'm sure, like, there's something that, right? Like, think about your, yeah. your seasons in, like, yeah. FIFA or, or even in a, an NBA and uh, the whole, like, uh, RPG. Yeah, that's, that's a good those. point. Like, I yeah. see a lot of people like, on the London Tube playing uh, FIFA on iPad and iPhone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I live uh, in, a, in a house with some hardcore soccer fans, and every time someone comes to visit, it's just this showdown in the next yeah. room. Oh, in our we office, um, in our office, we have, like, a communal area where we have a PS4 set up with FIFA on. And it's like mainly our sales team, and like yeah. they play it every single day mm -hmm. without fail. Yeah. And all year, like we've put other games in there, and they never Just get. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, uh, Minecraft is also another one. Like That's I would buy Minecraft for the fifth time on Switch, yeah. for sure. Yeah. If, especially if it's like the um, Pocket Edition. Like it's hugely successful. It's a really easy thing to sell a console. Yeah. And maybe people already have the Pocket Edition, so why get them? Stop them from buying I was going to say Dark Souls, them. but then I don't know if I would want to play that in the mood. That's too stressful. Imagine yeah. if you were like, got always seen a smile down and you have to like, and you then you just get throw your switch at a wall. Stand by. Well, yeah. I think, I think that's, <laughs> a, that's the thing that like with Minecraft and with like these games, like Minecraft, you can just play for as long or as little as you yeah. want. You can do 10 minutes in Minecraft. Like yeah, FIFA is like, you know, you can do like two minute halves. Yeah. Like yeah. That's like a four minute game. That's like you're done. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's these yeah. little sort of experiences you can have. Dark Souls on the shoe, but like that's that's like, more for like a train or a plane know. journey. Yeah, maybe on a plane. That's the thing, actually. If you were going to play on a plane, like that journey is going so fast. Yeah. yeah. Like think yeah. Amount, amount of times like we've been in a boss fight and then looked and gone like, we've been here for quarter of an hour. I always like, think it feels much longer. It feels does, <laughs> much longer, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, no, those are all good points, and <laughs> I feel like that's going to be interesting to watch because, again, the further we get out from that presentation, I'm just like. Third parties did not really show up. They showed no. up in a half step. I they didn't yeah. show up the way they should have shown up. Also, like there, because it has a touchscreen. There's so many mobile games that could be on it instantly, yeah. but yeah. that's a really tricky thing for them to message yeah. as well because it's like yeah. 
this is he's gonna have to work out some kind of iconography for the store where it's like this is only playable when you are undocked. Yeah. Also, it's could mm. potentially be a value issue. Like, oh, this is just yeah. It's, it's just, it's just I've got an iPad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tough. No, I completely agree. All right, well, that's our show. I mean, we got through everything, uh, and uh, yeah, that was that was a good one, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Thanks, and Thanks for having us on. Yep, yep. Thank you uh, for listening slash watching to Nintendo Voice Chat. We're a weekly show on IGN, and of course, you can you should drop everything and make sure you watch uh, Prepare to Try, and also listen to the IGN UK podcast. Plug it. Tell them. Yep. Tell the folks where to find. Um, we swear on it as we well. Say naughty things on it. I don't think Steve listens to it. <laughs> um, so don't tell him about that. Um. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it goes. Uh, yeah, it goes live every Friday. Yeah, and um, Pro Try is every Friday, but we don't have an episode this week because we couldn't get past the next bit because it's too hard. <laughs> yeah. Okay, is Rory still playing, or who's who's playing now? Uh, Rory's Always still Rory. Playing. Always, Always Rory. Rory. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Not gonna mess with that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Too fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've just seen too much pressure. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It's too much pressure like playing live. I, yeah. I just I hate doing it. Yeah. And trying to talk at the same time. Yeah. It's really hard. Yeah. 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 Absolutely not do that. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, well, uh, plug your Twitter handles then. So where can uh, we find you? At Krupa. All right. At Kamrogav. All right. And Alana? At Char Alanazad. All right. And I'm at Jose Osero. Thank you very much for watching, listening. We'll be back next week with more Nintendo Voice Chat.